Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chloe. I'm a recent graduate of UCLA with a double major in art history and Egyptology and a joint master's degree in Egyptology with an emphasis in Egyptian art. And today I am doing a get to know me Q&A. So I went onto my Instagram stories and asked you all what you wanted to know about me and you had a lot of great questions. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay. Question number one, where are you from slash where did you grow up? So I was actually born in Ohio, lived in DC for a few years. I was a military kid. And then when I was seven, we moved to Southern California and I basically bounced around LA County since then. And right now um, I'm in a suburb of LA County in lockdown with my grandparents. We're, we're in the middle of COVID. So uh, we're just hunkering down. Question number two, how did you get into art, Egyptology? Why are you so passionate about museums? So I would say this definitely had to do a lot with my mom. She was a big lover of the arts and made sure when I was little that we went to every single museum. When we lived in DC, we would go into the city all the time to see the National Gallery, um, the Portrait Gallery, um, and it was always a big part of my life. And she always had art books around that when I was little, I would flick through and I would look at them like picture books. And it was just something that I was always interested in. And Egypt very much played a role in that. Um, I used to watch every single documentary on Egypt on the History Channel back when History Channel actually had history. Um, and it was just something that I couldn't stop thinking about. And then in third grade, the King Tut exhibit came to the LA County Museum of Art, which was our local art museum. And I fell in love. Um, I thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. And I said, I want to be, I want to be an Egyptologist or an archeologist. And then I realized I hate the heat. I hate bugs. And I hate dirt. So not a great job for, you know, archeology span was not gonna be my thing. So I said, okay, mom, what can I, what job can I have and still see these things? And so she broke down the different jobs they have at a museum and I decided I wanted to be a museum curator in third grade. So another question I got, which I love is, what was the first work of art that I fell in love with? And I've, I think I've been thinking about this a lot and I think it had to have been Degas Little Dancer age 14. I remember seeing her at the National Gallery and I remember um, my mom had a art book with her in it and the way she was standing and she was so poised and um, being a little girl who was obsessed with ballet, um, that was definitely an in for me. Um, but now in retrospect, uh, Degas was a very wealthy man who would pay to have access to these young girls. And now knowing the background, it's a little, um, so it's, it's not um, what I would pick now, but it was definitely one of the first that I fell in love with. So part two to this question was, what is a more recent work of art that you fell in love with? And I think I'm gonna go with um, something by Sister Carita Kent, who is a Catholic nun, but also an art professor and um, a really prolific artist here in Los Angeles during the 60s and 70s. And we just passed uh, Martin Luther King Day here in the States and a lot of museums were posting things that connected to him. And she had a series of prints of MLK that she made shortly after his death. Um, their screen prints of his face alongside some of his quotes. And if you go to the Krita Art Center website, you can just look through a ton of them. Um, I think her work is so bold and um, it's captivating to look at because it's so bright. It's, very much in the style of pop art, but um, with a much more social justice oriented um, message than pop art. And I absolutely love her. 
So another question I got a lot about was, what did I do before UCLA? How did I end up at UCLA? Et cetera, et cetera. So before UCLA, I was a competitive figure skater and I worked at my skating rink, um, my local rink, helping run their summer camps. Um, I coached, I worked in the front office. Um, I did all the things, helped with their holiday shows, worked backstage, all that. Um, I went to community college first and then I transferred to UCLA, left my skating life behind and knew I wanted to get into um, art history, museum education, that kind of thing. Um, and that's really why I selected UCLA. One, it's close to home. I really, I, I didn't want to travel far. It's the best public school in the nation. Berkeley people are gonna fight me on this, but um, but it was really their art history department and their proximity to the Getty that they have the Fowler Museum on campus and the Hammer Museum as their um, campus art museum, which has an amazing collection, does amazing um, education programming and public programming. And I felt like UCLA over any other UC offered the most career growth opportunities and had the closest proximity to more internships, et cetera. And having a lot of faculty on staff who were connected with such institutions and having archives and things like that nearby um, was definitely my number one reason for choosing UCLA. And then probably number two was that I was a transfer student and I really wanted a school with a large transfer community and UCLA is one of the best for that. So that's why I ended up at UCLA. Another frequent question I got was what kind of extracurriculars or jobs was I involved with at UCLA? So I have always worked through school. I've been working since I legally could. And so I got a part-time job right when I got to school um, doing admin work. Um, and then I really knew I wanted to get involved with um, something in the arts. So I ended up for two years at UCLA working as a student educator at the Hammer Museum, which was one of my favorite things that I did during my time at UCLA. As a student educator, you are the main teaching um, staff of the museum. So you give public tours, you help with public programming, family events, things like that. Um, you, the program is incredible. The academic programs team at the Hammer is just the loveliest. They really view arts education as a form of social justice. Um, I felt like I grew so much during my time there, not only as an educator, um, but in what my passions were, which really is why I thought about starting this YouTube channel is I had the privilege to have access to so much information there that I would like to help share for others. Um, so I worked there, I worked at the Hammer. Um, I also did some volunteer stuff. I volunteered at a gallery for a little bit. Um, I was on the student advisory board at the Getty Center for their 2018 college night. Um, so I was constantly busy. Um, but beyond that as an extracurricular, I was really involved with research. So I was really involved with um, doing independent research with my advisor, helping her with um, a research project, getting to uh, develop my own project that turned into my honors thesis that then turned into my master's thesis. Um, I got to present it at a conference, um, present it at UCLA undergraduate week. So. I really dove into the research side of things as well. Um, and I didn't have a social life that much, to be honest. So another question I got was, what was my area of study? What was my master's thesis on? And how did I narrow down my area of focus? So I ended up in an emphasis in Egyptian art and architecture. Um, but I originally came in not knowing, not having a clue. Um, I knew I wanted to study art history. 
I was leaning towards 19th century French art when I first came into UCLA, but really no clue. Coming from community college, all of my classes were really broad seminar or broad survey courses to make sure that they were transferable. So everything was really open. And then coming to UCLA, I had classes like Caribbean art and, you know, just a seminar on surrealism and things like that. So I felt like a fish out of water. I was like, oh, maybe I want to study this or maybe I want to study this. And I had ideas of like royal pet portraiture as a project, which honestly, I may just like write a quick like blog posts on because Queen Victoria had some really cute um, portraits of her dog, Dash. Um, but I, I was all over the place. And so I sat down, I had a real heart to heart with myself and I said, what is it that I've always been excited about? And that came to Egyptian art. And UCLA happens to have a Egyptology major. It's technically ancient Near Eastern Egyptology. And I had a serendipitous meeting with the student affairs officer for the major. And um, I said, hey, I wanna take some classes in the department. And I, but I'm, I'm a transfer, I'm here for a short period of time. And she said, okay, you know what? Come to my office, Let, let's look at the course plan. I think it's totally doable for you to double major. And really I found it was important to double major because you cannot separate the art from the culture. You have to learn it all in context. So that was really important for me. And I had a meeting with the professor who would become my advisor. And she said, hey, if you're really interested in this and you're really gung ho for it, um, we have this departmental scholars program where while you are taking your bachelor's courses, you can take master's courses or graduate study courses and graduate with both your bachelor's and your master's at the same time. And so really, I just, I, it felt right. And I dove in with um, both feet. And that's, that's kind of how it happened. Um, my specific research project for my thesis was um, on this monumental gate at Medinet Habu, which is Ramses III's mortuary temple. Um, I was looking at the reliefs of, on the interior of this gate and looking at their symbolism and looking at the socio-political, economic, religious implications of these images of these royal women and the king. Um, broad area. It started out really, really broad. It started with a term paper that I had all these questions about. And then I just kept going to office hours and saying, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And my advisor guided me into this area that became my thesis. So, so I also got a lot of questions about post-grad life, which maybe this is a whole separate video. Um, a lot of people wondered what I'm doing. I'm living with my grandparents, helping them out during the pandemic. Um, I am doing some part-time freelance research stuff on the side, um, looking for full-time work. It's, it's a struggle, honestly, in academia and humanities and the arts. Um, the sector's rough, um, but I'm looking for like coordinator positions, admin positions. Um, and somebody else asked if I decided to do a PhD. And this is honestly probably a whole other video, but I decided no for the careers that I would like to have. A PhD is not necessary and it would not help me get there. Um, I love research, I, I do, um, but the pandemic has really helped me realize that I want to focus on more public facing um, roles and getting a PhD just wouldn't get me there. Which that was a great segue to the next question, which was what is a dream job? So right now I think my dream job would be working at a museum where I align with their mission statement, working in an education department, eventually running an education department, or working in interpretive content where I could merge my passions for research and access 
in developing accessible full text. Um, so if you haven't figured it out, um, museum education is really where my heart lies. And um, I realize as a white woman in this field, um, I have a lot of areas to grow, um, but there's so much work to do in that area that I just, it's something I'm really passionate about. So someone asked, what is a quote I live my life by? So <laughs> I have anxiety and I'm a perfectionist and that can hold me back from putting myself out there. So a quote I live my life by is Eleanor Roosevelt's, you must do the thing that scares you most. Um, it's really something I hold on to in those moments of self-doubt, that pesky um, imposter syndrome, that it doesn't hurt to try. And the more I'm scared of something, the more I should do it. Um, it's not an easy thing. Uh, it's something I have to practice multiple times a day, um, but it's definitely a quote I live my life by since I am someone who feels like I can at times be paralyzed by the what ifs and the, the uh, that imposter syndrome. <laughs> but the last question I have is what are some personal goals you have for 2021? So I really want to continue a lot of the personal growth I developed in 2020. 2020 was a year of breaking and healing. Um, I started therapy really started to work on a lot of my anxiety issues. And I really want to, moving into 2021, prioritize my mental and physical health, something I have not done in past years. And I definitely, because of the pandemic, learned how to slow down, how to take time and how to rest and something that my body was telling me I really needed. So that's something I wanna prioritize um, my word for the year is grow or growth. Um, I want to continue to grow this channel, um, putting myself out there, uh, making more content for you all. Um, I have some ideas that I hope you'll enjoy. I want to put myself out there more and network. Uh, there's some professional metrics I'd like to hit. I like to get a full-time job or get into something that I at least feel um, I am passionate about. We're in a pandemic, so setting the bar a little high with that one, but um, we'll see. But I really would like to embrace my creativity more and grow that more in 2021. So we've reached the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give this video a like and subscribe. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.